morning, everybody. So, we are here to talk more about spinning for a sweater and how to get that all done. And I think one of the most important steps is um, figuring out your gauge and figuring out what you can do for a sweater. So you can, and I alluded a little bit to it last week when we talked about the control cards and figuring out what kind of weight you have. So if you're figuring out what you want to do, and then you can pick out the sweater you want from there. And sometimes it may take, you know, several cards. If you've chosen, say, a worsted weight sweater and your spinning keeps coming out too light or too heavy or whatever it is to get to that right spot. And then once you're there, you're there. You got it. So... Once you know your yarn that you're gonna make, then you can figure out how much fiber you need. Now, I talked also about uh, BFL and Merino and Wensleydale and all the different breeds that you have are not necessarily interchangeable. Some of them are, but a good lot of them are not. So figure out what you've got and then you can go from there. So if I'm using a Wensleydale, but I'm swatching with a Merino, we know that's not going to work. But if I'm using a Falkland and swatching with a BFL, that might work. But it's best to use what you're going to use. So you don't have to use the exact fiber you're going to use. You don't have to get an extra four ounces of the special color ways you've decided to do. But you do need to kind of compare apples to apples. So if I'm doing BFL, and I am, I don't want to swatch with an undyed BFL. I can pick some other dyed BFL that I've got in my stash and make four ounces of it, make a swatch, and see is that swatch going to be right. If it's not, i got to swatch again. And I can tell you, I've got tons of swatches in all different shapes and sizes and I brought a few of them out to play today. But you wanna check with that, and you wanna check your yardage. So once you know what your yardage is, say you've got one ounce spun and plied, and you check your yardage, and you're getting about 60 yards in that one ounce, then you know kinda of what you have at that point. You can multiply out at that. So if you need to have say, you know, 600 yards, that's 10 times your 60 yards, that would be 10 ounces. I used a really easy math equation there. It's probably not going to be that easy, but my calculator's on my phone and my phone is in front of me. So use your calculator, figure it out, kind of write it down for you. Don't try to do it in your head unless you're really good at math. But kind of write it down, you know, one ounce of my fiber equals this much yardage, this is how much I want, and then kind of take it out. If you're doing a four color less is more sweater, it makes it a little more difficult because if you're doing a one color sweater, you know, all that yardage is going to be that one color. If you're doing four colors, then you can kind of divide um, by four, like each one is going, say you needed a thousand yards, each one is going to take up about 250 yards. Those middle two colors, you are using them a little bit more, so there is a little bit more yardage in there. But you can kind of fudge around it and figure out that they're mostly equal. You can add or take away a little bit. There's sections in between. I don't know if you can see. It's hard to see on these sweaters once they're done. But when you're working on them, you know, this is a blendy section right here. This is one color and this is one color. So these sections are pretty big, but they can be made smaller if you know you're running out of yardage. And then what can't be changed is the blendy sections so that they blend properly. Without the blendy sections, it just doesn't blend as well. So you want to keep those in, but you can increase or decrease these sections in here as you need to. So if you're doing a, you know, a taller sweater or a shorter sweater, like if you're doing a crop sweater, you don't want these sections to be as long. If you're doing a long sweater, you want these sections to be a little longer or you may have to add a fifth color. This is just one of those things. If you're not doing the direct pattern that's given on the Knitty site, which I will link below in the YouTube video so that you can see um, 
you know, just go directly to there if that's what you want to do. That one is really laid out so that it comes out exactly like it's supposed to do. If you're doing a different sweater, and I am doing a different sweater, you'll see that I'll have to fudge and change some of the stuff. So I have started my sweater. Well, not started my sweater. I've started spinning for my sweater. So, um, but one more thing about the swatches. These swatches, never get rid of them, but you should label them. These have been in a bag with the fiber so that I know what they are. So they're in little baggies with a little piece of the fiber and a little label. And the neat thing about them is when I did this one, I did them for articles, I think these were. And I did this one and I realized, yeah, I'm not really keen on that fiber. It's just not, mm, wasn't feeling it. But I did this one and immediately had to go buy two pounds of it just to make sure that I had enough for no matter what size sweater I wanted to do. I usually only need about 20 ounces for a sweater, um, 16 to 20 ounces. So I went and bought two pounds anyway, just so that I would have enough to make sure that I had it for this sweater because I loved this swatch so much. So it's just one of those things sometimes you know, you end up loving it or you end up hating it, but these swatches are always going to be valuable because they're always going to give you information. If I go to this fiber again, I'm attracted to some color, which happens. It's shiny, it's colorful, I want it, I get it, or I don't get it because I remember this swatch, but I could get it, bring it home and realize this is not the yarn I wanna make. So I need to do a different swatch, a different yarn, a different type, and then figure it out. Because, you know, this may be my go-to for that fiber, and I would know that this is not what I want. So these things are valuable to have and valuable to keep. And same with this. These are just in the round swatches. So if you're going to be doing a sweater in the round, you're going to get a better, more true gauge if you are working in the round. Um, the Knitty Sweater for Less is More is worked in, the, in flat, except for the sleeves. Uh, but so you may have to work on the gauge a little bit because most people's gauge changes whether they're working flat or if they're working in the round. So these are valuable to have around. And I will admit that oftentimes I start with a sleeve and that's sort of my swatch and I go from there. Now, I know when I do this sweater, I know what I'm going to get because the sweater that I'm making is going to be the exact same yarn as I made for this one. I don't need to wash the swatch. That's the problem with starting with a sleeve and continuing on if it works is that the swatch needs to be washed because your yarn changes. It changes from, you know, you've spun it and it changes when you wash it. When you knit it, it changes again when you wash it because the knitting changes it. It does change how the twist works. It just changes it a little bit and it may change it enough that you don't like it once it's been washed. And when you've got a full sweater done, that's kind of a bummer. So you want to be able to have that amount of swatch to wash and find out. This yarn that I've made, I know I've made this yarn in three different sweaters and I know what I'm going to get out of it. So once you know a yarn and you know what you're going to get out of it, you have your swatch, you can save it there. You can save two pieces of swatches if you want to, the unwashed and the washed, and know exactly what you're going to get. So I have notes instead of that because I have the sweaters. And the notes that I made are that this is my gauge before it's washed. This is the gauge after it's been washed. And so I know that if I'm knitting to the pre-washed gauge, I'm going to get the gauge afterwards. See all these things about... I know it sounds sort of pack ratty, but if you're saving these things, is you're not a pack rat. You're saving these things for a reason. You're saving them, and if you keep them nice and neat, you just got all of that information. This is important information for if you want to do another sweater. So that's what I have. So I have the information on this, and I know my gauge that I need to. And I left it at home, so I can't show you, but it's on a little card, and it gives me the gauge. I didn't keep my swatch to it. Um, I ended up running out of one of the yarns. I think it was somewhere in here, and I needed to have it. So I ripped out the swatch. I used the yarn again, but I made sure that I had my 
information right there. So all I have to do is look at that, and if I can match my gauge to that, it's gonna match the sweater, and this sweater matches the sweater that I'm going to do, at least in gauge. So this is the sweater I'm choosing to do. It's called Bubbly, and it is by Isabel Kramer. So, and I know her sweater is, it's all one color, and then it's got, um, the yoke is done. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm going to do the less is more styling all the way up, and then I'm gonna have do, because the top part of mine is gonna be the lighter color, which is what I started spinning, is this color. Because I wanna get this done, and then I can match up uh, something to do for the yoke design which is probably, I can just do a black or a really deep dark brown and it's gonna match. So maybe even a deep dark green, I don't know. I started with this one so then I could start matching up and get my um, dyed stuff in for the yoke color. So I will be doing five yarns for mine, five different colorways, but one colorway is simply because I'm doing a yoke. So I did think, of all kinds of other designs. So if you guys are looking, I pulled up a bunch of other ones that I think are great. If you're not going to do the design on Nitty called Less Is More, there's Hemingway by Amy Herzog, um, Epiphany by Cheryl Burke. Oh my gosh, that sweater is so pretty. Um, but it just wasn't mixing up with what I wanted to do. Uh, Newsome by Bristol Ivy is on my list to do. Uh, and it would be really pretty. It's got some slight detailing in it that I thought might be nice, uh, but I did end up really deciding I wanted to do a yoked sweater with a design on it. Lisbon by um, Misa Erda is, I know I said, sorry, Misa. Um, the Lisbon is a sweater that I've had on my list forever, and I really want to do it, but it's a different weight than I was going to do, so I'm not doing that one. And uh, Akibia by Kate Gilbert was another one that's been on my list, but it's too thin. So Akibia and Lisbon really got knocked out simply because they weren't the weight that I wanted to do. And I can spin for them another time, but for this, I'm really using the stuff that I know. I know I need a little bit of comfort spinning right now, and comfort spinning for me is my default spinning, and that's this stuff and something like this sweater. So it's about sport weightish in and in BFL, it's just really easy, and it's just what I like to do. So, start swatching. Swatch some stuff that's, you know, apples to apples. Don't try to change it up too much. So, swatch kind of what you want to do. Uh, get your sweater ready. Start thinking about it. Figure out your yardage, and then you can buy your fiber and really get going. So... This is it. This is when we're really going to get going on our sweater project. I know it's an odd time because Christmas is right around and we're probably all running around trying to finish up Christmas projects and stuff. But this also gives you something to think about that's for you, unless you're doing it for a gift for somebody else. But it's kind of really neat to have something that's for you to think about and something that you can start right after Christmas has ended if you're working on projects or even now as kind of a comfort project for yourself. So in future weeks, I remember I talked about a couple weeks ago that we're going to do some weaving in Less Is More. So I've got my yarns sitting out waiting to be put together and I'm going to be working on some weaving stuff for you guys. A little bit of weaving and a little bit of sewing and continuing to check in while we're all working on our sweaters. So if you've got questions or you need some further help or information on working on your sweater spin, just let me know. You can reach me at um, here on YouTube or on Instagram. And there's Ravelry, there's Patreon, there's Facebook. Oh my gosh, there's everywhere. Even my um, blog pages, you can send a comment or an information thing through that. There's an email thing on my teaching page, amykingteaching.com, I think. I don't remember. Um, but I will link a bunch of things down below the YouTube video so you guys can have all the means to contact me if you've got information um, that you need to have or questions. And it's possible I do another video if there's enough questions about the same thing or 
if they're not, you know, individual questions about colors or whatever, but if you've got some big questions, let me know. It might be another video is needed, but otherwise we're going to be working on some other projects while we're working on our sweaters. Okay. Bye guys. Talk to you later.